and let you know that I can hear you. Hey Amen. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, you all should be getting a, uh, a notification for the recording. Did you get that already? Give a thumbs up if you got that. Did you get it, Marvin? Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are so excited about what God is going to say tonight on tonight's Mars Worship Life Center Bible Teaching Zoom. Uh, you all look amazing, even through your uh, profile shots. I'm so happy to be able to share God's word on tonight uh, with all the wonderful things that he's been doing, the vein and, the, and that he's had us in uh, this past month. Uh, just uh, last week, Marvin was sharing about uh, you can't be what you weren't born to be. So tonight I'm going to uh, do an addition to that uh, teaching because that's very powerful. Somebody can say, what do you mean you can't be what you weren't born to be? Uh, examples uh, in the Bible, we talked about Moses, how he tried to negotiate with God that he did not want to lead the people. He was trying to be something he wasn't born to be, even though that he was he was a uh, washed down the Nile to Pharaoh's mother. You know, he he grew up in a family, but yeah, that's great. But that's your destiny was even bigger than when you went down to the river and where you ended up. His destiny was greater than that. And so he tried to negotiate with God and because he didn't want he didn't want to be what he was born to be. So when you when it says that you can't be what you weren't born to be, he used um the the homosexuality type thing, you know, you're born a male or a female trying to pretend or take on on characteristics of something that you're not. You're trying to be something you're not. There's so many examples in the Bible of people that ran from the thing that God had called them to be. Uh, so again, tonight, we just want to continue on in that vein that you can't be what you weren't born to be. But tonight, um, I have several scriptures. I don't have just one. So if you're taking notes, if you want to jot down some of the notes, we're just going to flow with how the Lord has given it to me to give it to you guys tonight. So Father, I thank you, Lord God. Just decrease me right now in the name of Jesus, Father. I know Marvin already prayed. Thank you so much for his prayer, God. But I pray right now for your strength. Hide me, oh God, and allow your word to come forward like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight, we're going to talk about don't get so comfortable with something that you forget the power and the authority it obtains. I'm going to say that again. Don't get so comfortable with something or someone that you forget the power and the authority it obtains. So what are you saying tonight? I'm glad you asked me. If you have your Bibles and if you know the story, I'm going to go through this. I'm going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant. I don't know if any of you know what the Ark of the Covenant is. Um, I didn't have like a huge picture of it uh, to show, but I'm going to try to bring it in. Can you actually see that on the camera? Wait a minute, that, that's somebody else, Lord Jesus. Uh, this is why, uh, as I learn how to do Zoom, people of God, we're going to have all kind of little pictures and things up for you guys to see uh, what the Ark of the Covenant and all that other good stuff is going to look like. Let me turn it sideways. So if you could see a picture of that. This is what the Ark of the Covenant looked like. Amen. Okay. So the Ark of the Covenant, also known as the Ark of the Testimony or the Ark of God, is believed to be the most sacred relic of the Israelites. And is described as a wooden chest covered in pure gold, as you can see all the gold that it was covered in, covered in pure gold and with an elaborately designed lid called the mercy seat. If you all can see that, that's like a picture of, of it. According to the Bible, Moses had the Ark of the Covenant built to hold the Ten Commandments at the command of God. The Israelites carried the Ark with them during their 40 years spent wandering in the desert and after the conquest of Canaan it was brought to Shiloh now according to the book of Exodus God instructed Moses to build the ark during his 40-day stay up on Mount Sinai he was shown the pattern for the tabernacle and furnishings of the ark and told that it would be made out of and I'm going to pronounce this word because I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly it was made out of ukasha wood uh, to house the tablet stone. Why that particular type of wood? It says because it was very durable and it was very sturdy. So again, God is given instructions on how to carry this ark. So Hebrews 9 and 4 says the ark of the covenant was covered on all sides with gold in which was a golden jar holding the manna. 
and Aaron's rod, which budded, and the tablets of the covenant. So there were three things that were in the Ark of the Covenant. It was the jar holding manna and Aaron's rod, which had budded, which means it had flowers on the rod, and the tablets of the covenant. The tablets are the, what the Ten Commandments uh, that Moses, God had given uh, Moses. The jar of manna, the Ten Commandments, and the flowering staff of Aaron were precious, and each was a symbol. The manna was something to live from, which was the bread. The tablet of the law was something to live by, which were the commandments that God had given Moses, which he gave, he put both sets in there. Now, you know, there were two sets of commandments. You know why? Because Moses broke the first ones. So God gave, scribed a second one. So he had both of those in there. Moses had smashed the first set after descending the mountain the first time and seeing the people worshiping the golden calf. According to legend, Moses was commanded by God to pick up every single shard from the first set of broken tablets and put them into the ark along with the whole second set. Now, as I grow older and I think about that, again, we have Aaron's rod, which had flowers on it. We have two sets of commandments because Moses broke the first one because he was upset with folks down there worshiping a golden cow. And then God instructed him for this ark to put both sets in there. Why not just put the set that God had put back together for him? Okay, I'm going to tell you why. I'm believing that because the more I think about the broken tablets, it reminds me of the broken parts of us. God had put those, those words on the tablet from heaven and scribed them and put them there. And, and Moses broke the commandments that God had given to the people. So if a person uses broken vessels, it's considered an embarrassment. But God seeks out broken vessels for his use. As it says, God is the healer of the shattered hearts. So even with the broken piece, there was something that was solid there that represented what God had put in, wanted in the ark. So you have the shattered parts and then you have the whole parts. I'm so grateful that we serve a God that when we can be broken in so many places that he can put us back together again with his word. Amen. So he put the shattered pieces in there along with the, the second uh, commandment scribe or tablet that God had given him. Now the flowering staff, was something to live. So now you have the bread of the manna, which was something to live from. You have the commandments or the law to live by. And now you have the flowering staff was something to live. Now, the answer I think is not in the staff, but in the flowers. The flowers are a symbol of joy. And the flowering staff is in the ark to remind us that our faith must above all be joyous. We read in the second verse of Psalms 100, serve the Lord in joy, come before his presence with singing. Now, I'm going to stop right there just for a moment, because I know you all are probably thinking, okay, where is, where is Minister Z going with this? So tonight, again, it says, don't get so comfortable with something or someone that you forget the power and the authority it obtains. We're talking about the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant had some power. It had some authority. It had the power of God it, it consisting in the things or the objects. Remember last week we spoke about, Marvin talked about God anointing objects. And we went on to talk about how God anointed the, the slingshot for David to slay the giant for, I believe it was Samuel, the, the, the jawbone of a donkey and he slayed soldiers. How he will uh, anoint an object in order for it to carry out its purpose, to carry out its will. Tonight, you are anointed vessels of God. And there's assignments on your life that God is wanting you to carry out. So tonight, again, we're talking about the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant and uh, giving some examples. Now, David formerly looked for counsel in big decisions. 2 Samuel 5 and 19, 23 says, but we do not find those words here in this section. Instead, the parallel account in 1 Chronicles states that David consulted with captains, even with every leader. God had commanded the ark should be moved with poles, not on a cart. Now listen, God told them specifically how to move the ark. He told them specifically what to put in the ark. Now God was very clear on his stipulations for carrying the ark, God warned the priest, they will not touch the holy objects 
or they will die. Now, listen, God told them how to put the ark together. He told him them what to put in the ark. Then he said, if you put your hands on it, if you touch any of the part of the ark inside, outside, you will die. That's in Numbers 4 and 15. Now, Exodus 25 and 10 through 25, God's instructions and details for the construction of the ark of the covenant. He gives the details for this construction. How many of you know that God has spoken details into your life? Before we were even formed in our mother's womb, he specifically had every detail, every instruction for us. So God instructs them to build for purpose. When God gives instructions, he's given instructions for us for purpose to build on our life. There's purposes for that, for every instruction that God speaks for our lives. Now, the purpose was there were offer, offerings for the tabernacle, the ark of the table. There was a lamp stand that the ark sat upon. It had to go to a tabernacle. It went through all these different things. But before it had to get to those places, God gave instructions at the beginning so that it would be able to fulfill its destiny throughout the ending. OK, so again, we talk about the things with the uh, the Ark of the Covenant covenant. Then they went through the priestly garments. Then there was the ephod that they had to go past and go through. The ephod is a linen apron worn in ancient Hebrew times that uh, is a vest for the high priest. It had like jewels and diamonds and, and, and jewels and, and different types of jewelry in it. Uh, it was like a, it was really pretty. It was like a, a breastplate for them. So many components connected for the purpose of the Ark of the Covenant. Do you know that you have so many components connected to you when you obey the instructions of God, that he loves each of you so much that he is very detailed with your purpose on tonight? So when God gives instructions, when God speaks something into your life, take it, think it not strange or don't take it lightly when he's giving you instructions for what you need to do. It may have to go against the grain of everything you ever thought about. It may have to go against the grain of what your family's mindset is, what, what it looks like for your career or, 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 or your destiny for whatever your business may be. But when God speaks a word and gives you instructions, you better believe that it's detailed and that he had you first in mind. You were never the afterthought for the details that God has for you. So it goes on to talk about how God told them to construct the Ark of the Covenant, what wood to use, how to use half cubic long. This is in Exodus, um, this is Exodus 25. It, he gives the instructions. It talks about one and a half cubics wide and one and a half cubics high. He said, you shall overlay it with pure gold inside and out and it shall overlay it and it shall make a gold molding around it. I mean, he's being very detailed about this Ark. You shall cast four gold rings for it and fasten them on its four feet and two rings shall be on one side of it and two rings on the other side. In verse 13, it says, you shall make poles from the, from the Ashaya wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put the holes into the rings and the sides of the ark to carry the ark with them. The poles shall remain in the ring of the ark. It goes on and on and on. It talks about in verse 18, you shall make two cherubims of gold. Make them of hammered work at the two ends of the mercy seat. There was a mercy seat on this ark. Uh, you can make one cherub at one end and one cherub on the other end. The cherub shall have their wings spread upward. He just goes on and on about the details of this ark. And it says in verse 22, there I will meet you, meet with you. And from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony, I will speak to you about all that I give you in commandment to the sons of Israel. Now, listen, people of God, God is so detailed that every intricate detail holds a purpose. The way that you think about things, the way that you create, the way that you uh, maneuver, those are all detailed things that God, God put inside of you because we're created in his image. So because again, he's the, he's the master of creation. He's spoken to a dark 
place, a dark space, and his words took form and shape. And it began to, 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 to show form of even with what he spoke. He didn't have to put his hands on it. He didn't probably even have to put his eyes on it. He just spoke it. He thought it. His thoughts can even form something. His words even created something. So how much more can your thoughts, how much more can your words create something in your life for the purpose and the destiny that God speaks has for you? I mean, again, we can speak death and life over our lives, but what are your words creating tonight? The first month of January, when we came onto Zoom, uh, the word was God is coming for every word that we speak. Every word that you speak, God is coming for it. And that's been the word that uh, has been with Mars Worship Life Center since January. I mean, God has spoken so many other things too, but that's one of the things that he, he was saying about that. So tonight, as we talk about this Ark of the Covenant, uh, it, it's just so, it, it amazes me how powerful God is to speak detail for every situation of our lives. Okay, so David had the novel idea to put the ark on a new cart. Now, is that what God told him to do? Okay, how many times God give us details and information and we still do what we want to do? Listen, tonight, again, do not get so comfortable with something or someone that you forget the power and the authority it obtains. And I'm going to continue to break that down. David, again, he took it upon himself to, to put it on, on a new cart. So when the Philistines moved the ark, none of them were killed. But what was the difference between the two? It seems clear that God didn't judge the Philistines because they didn't know better. Now, did God not say, do not touch anything on the ark or in the ark or you will die? Now, the Philistines touched it, but they didn't die. Now, how about, this is just backing up the point that you will be judged for what you know and don't do, not for what you don't do, not know and do. You understand what I mean? You're going to be judged for the things that you know and you don't do. So the Philistines didn't know any better, so they didn't die. So the ones that knew better, they had circumstances. They had repercussions with it, okay? So, but let's move on. By way of pr practical application, this passage this passage informs us that we can't trust our spiritual leaders to make our decisions for us. In this situation, Uzzah is U-Z-Z-A-H, Uzu, some people say, and some people say Uzzah, could have said, I was just following orders. Now, you want to ask me who Uzzah was. I'm so glad you all asked me because I have a story to tell you within a story. Now, the second, the ark had stayed for a period of time at this man's house named Abinadab's house. Now, Abinadab's house, he had two sons. And one of his sons' names was Uzzah or Uzu. Okay? So Uzu had a brother and his name was Ohio, not Ohio, but Ohio. Well, let's say this, may well have become accustomed to its presence because the Ark of the Covenant was in their house. Listen now, the Ark of the Covenant was in the house where Uzzah lived, which was the son of this man named Abinadab. Now, there, this, there was an old saying, Famili familiarity breeds contempt. That could have applied to Uzzah. So let me tell you as we go on what happens to him. So now, they're carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Uzu is with the crew, all right? They, they, they got the main, the makeshift cart, not going by all of God's details of how to, be, to carry this Ark, doing it their way, you know, putting on two by four on a slab and, and doing what they want to do, not going by the details of what God told them to do. So what happened? David... Okay, it says, Uzu says, I was just following orders. David told me to do it, but clearly God held Uzu responsible for his own decision to move the ark in this way. Now, what was happening is, as they were walking and carrying the ark, the, the two calves that, they, that were carrying the ark, they stumbled. So when the calves stumbled, Uzu, I guess just out of reaction, tried to catch the ark. And when he touched the ark, he fell dead. Now, let's back up. David told him to do certain things. Did he forget what the power and the authority that he was carrying? Because it is sat in his house for a moment, he got comfortable with it. How many of us have gotten or have gotten comfortable, so much so with leadership because you know that voice. 
that's a familiar voice. That's just pastor. Oh, that's just my brother. That's just my sister. But God is speaking through them to give you a message of instruction for the purpose of your life. And because you're so comfortable with it, you don't take heed to what God is speaking. So it causes something inside of you to die. It causes a portion of your purpose to die because you're too comfortable with the voice. You're too comfortable with the authority that was been spoken through you. Okay, prime example. People get too comfortable. I, I use examples of, of certain things that I know with people's lives. Sometimes it requires you to have to go to another place to be received because the people over here don't accept you and don't appreciate you and have taken for granted the greatness that's inside of you. Amen. So this guy falls dead because he's he out of, out of reaction. He's just going to try to catch the ark. And God specifically told him, don't put your hands on it. The same ark that sat in his house for a while, you became so accustomed to it. You're so comfortable with it that it didn't it didn't even the value of it, the authority of it, the power that was within it. Did you forget for a moment because you became comfortable with it? Listen, God is a merciful God. He is a just God. But let's not get so comfortable because he's a forgiving God that we continue to stumble. We continue to do the things we want to do because he's a forgiving God. Look, we do not ever want to stress out God's grace or, 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 or not even stress it out. But don't, don't, don't put your hands on something that because you know that it's there, that I, I, I'll be okay with it. God will forgive me. You know, I'll just ask for forgiveness. I won't ask to be delivered because, you know, I, I'll just ask for forgiveness. But if you really want to get through something or get over something, be delivered from it. Quit going back with a repeat, a repetitive repentance. Amen. Be delivered completely. So is there traveling? This this man called Uzu, E is U-Z-Z-A-H or Uza. He touched the, the, the Ark of the Covenant and he fell dead right then and there. So let's say we talked about this um again don't get so comfortable with something that you forget the power and authority it obtains uh this week a lot has been going on uh to god be the glory uh, my husband's been promoted as a manager if all of you that know marvin you know he's pretty low-key he, he he's, he's real he's, he's even killed it takes a lot for a switch to go off on him and when that happens it don't even look right on him because it's like is that you you know, you, you wake up the, 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 other, the other person inside. Y'all don't want to say the other word, but you wake up the beast, okay? So, but that's, that, it's very rare that it's there. Um, and having to manage different personalities. It's just like with ministry. It's like training spirits. It's like helping spirits. When you have to manage spirits, you got all type of personalities and spirits you're dealing with. So because you're easygoing and because, you know, you, you still have an authority, people take that for granted. So they think that they can sometimes, and not just with him, I'm talking about with us. I'm sure we've all experienced that because, you know, you could be loving and kind. And sometimes people just have this look on their face like, don't mess with me. And you, you just go the other way because there's nothing present about you wanting to be around them. So mission accomplished. Amen. But for someone who's real laid back and, 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 and that loves God, people try to sometimes take that as, it ain't, it's not a weakness, amen? Because what you're gonna have to understand is be mindful of how you try to uh, mishandle God's people because you got so comfortable with them. There's still an authority and there's a power and there's an anointing that rests within you that there, that there has to be a level of honor. Now, a lot of people say you're not honorable. No, 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 I'm talking about when you are not, when you are living the, the, the best that you can, the will of God, and you're not trying to cause any types of problems or anything like that. You just got mean-spirited people that's always trying to find wrong and what's right, amen? Just like folks want, the world wants the lie to be loud and they want the truth to be silent, okay? So with, you, with the authority of things that have happened um, in, in you, People get so comfortable with it. Uh, your coworkers get comfortable with you. Uh, the, 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 your, mem your, your members that you, 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 you uh, worship with can get comfortable with you, but forgetting that God still operates in you when you tell them something or get offended by it because they think you're saying it. Yeah, you, know, you know the difference with a discerning spirit when somebody just want to say what they want to say out of their feelings, but when God is speaking, prophetic word is basically a message from God, amen? So that means if you want a message from God, his word is prophetic all by itself. Open it up and read it and find and apply it and study to show yourself approved. 
Okay. So again, the authority in which you walk in, people sometimes get so comfortable with your voice. They get so comfortable with your surroundings. They get so comfortable with you being, uh, making things joyful for their, um, for their uh, environment, for their workplace. When you get ready to be promoted or move and leave another job, people feel in some type of way. They're like, man, I like being here because, because Sonia was here, Katrina was here, Kali was here. You know, now they, they done moved up. What am I supposed to do? You know, their purpose and destiny may not be yours. It may just been there for them to show you joy, to show you how to maneuver, to show you how to move. So again, don't get so comfortable with the with the person or 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 or, or the position of what God has ordained someone to be in that you that you lose sight of what God's instruction is for your life when it's spoken from the prophet's mouth, when it's spoken from the pastor, the missionary, uh, you, you, uh just whoever God is sending to speak a word to you. Don't pick and choose the part of God's word that you want to apply to you. A lot of times, what I'm finding is people want, uh, want to hear from God, but they don't want to obey God. They want to hear from him. Oh, he spoke to me. He spoke to me when I was studying and showing myself approved. He spoke to me or I went to this revival or I went to this program and God, God pulled me out from the crowd and he had a word just for me. Oh, you're so excited to hear from him, but you're not excited to obey from him. What is that? We need and we wonder why sometimes things are happening the way they are because we want to pick and choose. And it's not like a, a tender piece, a tender piece of pork or a tender piece of meat that, that's been grilling for a while or been, been barbecuing for a while and just falls off the bone. You don't get to pick and pull it apart for what you want and then what you don't want. When God gives instructions for something, it, it, it would be in our best interest to take heed to everything that he says. Because there's a reason for it. It's the uncomfortable things. It's the unusual things that God will have us to do in order to move into our fullness, to move into our purpose. It's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. It looks crazy to everybody else when God tells you to move from that state, when God tells you to start your business, when he told Moses to build an ark on dry land, looking crazy. People out here talking about you because you're building an ark on dry land. Only because God instructed. It will sometimes make you look foolish to other people, but he'll take the foolish things to make them work for your favor. How many times have you seen that? Uh, the odds against people in the Bible that looked like it was working against them. Again, David, he wasn't the biggest guy in statue, but he slayed a giant with what? The object that God anointed, which was the slingshot, which was the rock. So it looks crazy. How this guy gonna go out here against this giant? Because we're looking at what we see with our eyes. We're not looking spiritually with what God is wanting to do for us. The authority, the power that he has given us to walk in. So again, it doesn't have to make sense for a God, for Jesus to take mud and to spit on it or dirt and to, and to put it on a blind man's eye and to make him see. Doesn't look right. I mean, if, if I was to take some mud right now, unless God anointed it, and I spit on it, I think all I would have would be a mud pie, amen, because we used to make those back in the day, you know, but I'm saying, but if God anointed the spit, and they're able to see it, he can, he can use whatever object that he wants to get the victory, so everything points back to him, amen, so I hope that this is helping somebody tonight, when God speaks a word into your life, don't just think that, that oh, that's great, he loves me so much, he gave me a word, but then you don't apply it, if he said to move, move. If he said to be still, be still. If he told you to go and pray for that person who has despitefully used you, that, is, that has talked about you, and you don't want to do it, and he's instructing you and you know he's telling you, there's a blessing in obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice, people of God. So people who obey God's instructions always experience the miraculous. Listen, I'm going to say that again. People who obey God's instructions always experience the miraculous. Have you ever been sick and then you trusted God and the miraculous just happened? I'm not talking about taking some tussin or, or rubbing some Bengay on it. I'm talking about putting his word, applying it to it. Amen. Because here's the deal. The people who obey God's instructions always experience the miraculous. Apostle Edmund C. Brown said earlier this year that we are in the moment of the miraculous for the believer. We are in the moment for the miraculous for the believer. Listen, when you are moving in miracle signs and wonders, continue to move with humility. 
Because a lot of times when you're moving and people from the outside that are looking at your life, that may be going through some things, may be struggling, it looks easy to them. It looks like, how is this happening so easily for them? Amen. But they don't understand what you had to go through, what, what you had to endure, what, what sacrifices had to come about, what, what you had, how you had to forsake all others, how you had to die of yourself. How you had to put that, those things away. How you had to truly trust God. How you did it afraid. How your faith was wavering, but that little bit of faith that was wavering that was holding on was enough to get you through. When you are in the moment of the miraculous, you continue to move with humility. You move in a pace, in a way that you know that only God's hand is upon it. So people who obey God's instructions always experience the miraculous. You can't pick and choose what you want from God when he tells you in, in detail what he wants from you. Because when you only take a portion of it, you only going to receive a portion of, of the outcome. Or you're going to find yourself going through unnecessary changes, asking people to pray for you when they already prayed for the answer, but you're too hard-headed and stubborn to walk in the promise. Amen. So we're not going to keep praying for the things that God has already sent a rescue for you. Kind of like the guy that was drowning and asked God to, to save him. And he sent a helicopter. He sent a, 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 a life preserve. He sent all these things. And he kept waiting on God, waiting on God. But God sent him in so many different ways. So he ended up drowning. We're not drowning in this season of our lives. We're going to understand the authority when it's spoken. We're going to understand who it's coming from. I'm not talking about our own strength because we can't lean not on our own understanding. We have limited supply when we lean on our own understanding. Amen. But we serve a God who is limitless. When, uh, when Israel Hawkins wrote the song, Take the Limits Off, he wasn't just saying take the limits off of me, God, God, so that I can move. God was saying take the limits off of me because I'm a God that has no limits. So again, when you obey God's instructions, you always experience the miraculous. Obeying God's instructions can turn lack into abundance. Amen. Failure into success, shame into glory, and the ordinary into extraordinary. We ought to remember that God is only, is, is only the only wise God. He knows the ending and the beginning. Isaiah 46 and 10 says, he knows what lies in the darkness. The Bible says in Daniel 2 and verse 22, he reveals deep and secret things. We've talked about that a couple of months ago, that it didn't say that God calls for the shallow, shallow calls to the shallow. It said deep calls into the deep. So when people say, oh, you're trying to be deep. Yes, I am, because it's in the depths of the things. It's in the deep places in which we grow. It's not in the shallow end where we can see everything, where we're comfortable, where we don't want to move because we say we're in the water, but we're not in the depths of it. It's in the deep places where God is. He reveals the deep and the secret things. There's some secrets that God wants to reveal for you for the purpose of your life, for the destiny of your life. He knows what is in the darkness. And light dwells with him. Let me tell you, when there's darkness and light shows up, darkness cannot stay. Amen. So you see, God knows all things. And when he reveals hidden things, it is our benefit. God's instructions may not sound logical. So sometimes we try to overanalyze it. We try to dissect it. But it says God's instructions may not sound logical to us. But when a person obeys it anyway, they are bound to see God's power at work. How many unusual, uncomfortable things has God told you to do and you did it and look at the rewards that came back to you. Look at the, 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 the blessings that came upon you because of those unusual things that you did because of your obedience. When God gives an instruction, it is to bless and uplift us. Our obedience does not benefit God. Our obedience does not benefit God. He is already God, all powerful only wise, excellent, and perfect. He is the creator of heaven and earth. Our obedience to God's instructions benefits us, not him. We are the benefactor. We are the benefactor of obedience. Amen. So tonight, I'm just encouraging you to be obedient to the things that God is telling you to do, no matter how uncomfortable it is. Again, stop sharing major ideas with, 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 with people who have a minor way of thinking. When God gives detail and instructions, listen, let me tell you something. God has given instructions to me and Marvin to do some things and it was very uncomfortable. 
uh, and it was like, God, you sure us, Jesus, you, you sure you want us to, to do a ministry? You sure you want to call us to do this? Lord, we've loved you our whole lives. We grew up in church. Church is in us. We are the church. Again, there's no such thing as church hurt unless a building just fell on top of you. Amen. Unless a brick in a church just threw itself at you and it hurt you. Amen. But I've never seen a building hurt somebody unless it just fell on them. You are the church. This church hurts foolishness that people are saying. These cliches and this religious mess that folks been talking about has been holding people uh, bound for years. There's no such thing as church hurt. Somebody in the church man said or did something to hurt you. People can try to do that all the time. Spirits, uh, things of that nature. But I've never seen a building come up to somebody and just hurt them. Amen. You are the church. Amen. So tonight, when, when God gives detailed instructions, listen, why all, why all this exact instruction and measurements when God told them about the ark, not, not the ark that he only told and gave instructions and details for Noah, but I'm talking about this ark of the covenant, this ark of the covenant. Uh, when God repeats something, it is for emphasis. When you keep hearing a prophetic word that's been spoken to you over and over again, it's not that God is a parrot. It's because you haven't walked it out yet. And because God is a God of instruction, he will not change his word until you change the situation, until you walk that thing out. So if you've been hearing something from since you were a child, oh, God called you to pastor. Uh, God called you to, 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 uh, to be a, a, a prophetic psalmist. God called you to own this business. And, 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 and it hasn't happened yet, or you're walking in it or whatever. It, God, and you keep hearing it even in your teens. or in, God's not going to change his word until the change happens, until you walk it out. So think it not strange when you hear it at the age of five, you hear it at the age of 15 and then at 25, you don't hear it again because now you're walking it out. It's not that one person just that God ordained or anointed a person to give his, his word. A prophetic word is a message from God. So when you were five, God ordained and anointed someone to have a message just for you about your life. So when you hear it again uh, through another prophet or through a, not even another prophet, just someone who believes God in this hearing, because we all have the gift of prophecy. Amen. So think it not strange that you're hearing it. But when you no longer hear it and now you hear something else to add to that, that means that you walk that part of the word out. So it's time to walk out what God is calling us to do. So with he, when he repeats something, it's because he emphasizes it. I think the lesson is despite setbacks, we are always to be filled with hope. We must know that God is always in control. His plans are definite. The plans will always come to fruition. His plans always come to fruition. He moves in his own time frame because he is time. Mark 1 says the beginning of the gospel, but there is no end, not to the good news of salvation. God is saying, trust me, I know the way. I think one reason God gives such precise measurements is to make us aware that he not only knows every detail of our lives, but cares about every detail. As Matthew 10 and 30 says, tell us he even knows the number of hairs on your head. So tonight, again, the message for tonight, and, I, and I'm wrapping this up. Don't get so comfortable with something that you forget the power and authority it obtains. Don't forget it. Don't forget. And listen, we continue to stay humble, even in these areas, because God has anointed each and every one of you to be a mouthpiece for the advancement of the kingdom of heaven. We don't, we don't have to grow it. It's already grown. We're advancing it by helping those that don't know Christ. Sinners, we're all sinners saved by grace, but, but, but uh, presenting people with salvation to show them that after you leave this place, that you want to live again, that you're living this life right now so that you can live again. God has anointed objects in your life. I'm not talking about, like I said, witchcraft things where people have like uh, charms and bracelets and, and, and potions and lotions and things like that. No, I'm talking about the object, the object of the hammer. If you are called to build something, he has anointed it for you to start a construction business. If you have the ability and the object of pens and arts and, 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 and arts and pencils and paper to draw a thing, he's anointed the objects for you to draw, to create something, to write your book, the books that God has inside of you, the businesses that he's put inside of you. When God speaks the word, he does not change it. 
because he's a God who cannot change, yet he changes everything. So the guy that touched the um, the Ark of the Covenant, again, his name was Uzu or Uzzah. Again, this Ark sat in his house. It sat there and you go to carry it to its destination. And then you, out of reflex, you touch it. Or was it out of reflex? We don't know the intent of his heart. The word of God says the heart is deceitful. Who can know it? Even when he touched it, could he have, you know, you can't, you can't touch what is holy and try to defile it. You cannot because God's power is upon it. When he's detailed about everything, he was detailed about the way he constructed you, the way that he created you. He's detailed about it because he loves us that much. Let us not get so comfortable or let the people that are around you not get so comfortable with you that they don't respect or honor the God that's within you. Listen, the God we serve is no joke. He's a God who is, who is, who is, who is sovereign. He's a God who is loving. He's a God who created us to be exactly what he called us to be. Again, last Thursday, Marvin said, you can't be what you weren't born to be. You can't be that. Why? It's, it's like the body of Christ. There's a reason we have all these different functions on our bodies, our eyes so we can see, ears so we can hear, nose to smell, mouth to taste. There's a reason for it. I don't see my hand telling, trying to tell my mouth I want to be a mouth when I'm a hand. If the parts of the body are in place, then it can function fully. But let's talk about the head. What is the head over the body? Christ is the head. Christ is the head of everything. Christ is the head of Mars Worship Life Center. The anointing that rests on this ministry. It's not by anything that we've done. It's because of who he is. It's because of who he is. The God that we serve. That people are able to give testimony of God healing them. Of, 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 of canceling debt. Of, of moving from one place to another for, for ministry. To hear and to obey. Again, let us not be so thirsty so to speak, to hear a prophetic word, but yet we're not hungry enough to obey the word that God speaks over our lives. Uh, you know, I'm telling you, in this hour, in this moment of what God is doing for each and every one of us, there is an authority and an anointing that he has, he has, he, he has, he has put upon us for us to be able to, to go further distance than we've ever gone before. Whatever, if you think about the attacks that have come to your body, what part of your body has been attacked? Has it been your feet? Because God is telling you to move forward, to move from that, from that territory to another, to move away from those people that mean you no good, to move away from, 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 that, from that particular ministry because God is calling you somewhere else. He's planting you somewhere else. He's uprooting you, the growth spurts that we talked about. If you're hurting in your heart, because I'm telling you right now, your heart's been hurt. But God, you have a heart for people. But because your heart has been broken, the way you used to love on people, you don't do it so much because people didn't love you back. God had to work on your heart. If your hands have been hurting or your joints and your arms have been hurting, have you been reaching out to the wrong thing? Have you been extending your hand to the wrong thing? We got to think about the things, about our bodies, what's happening in our bodies, the bitterness. Why, 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 do, why do I feel so cold all the time? Cold heart because I'm bitter, because I'm not delivered from being bitter for something. Tonight, anything that's causing us to be stagnant, anything that will cause us not to move into our purpose, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that it breaks from us right now, that it shatters from us, that it cannot go into our next. It cannot go into our next move. It cannot go into our next dimension. It cannot go into our next elevation because of the, the assignment that God has for us is greater, is greater than any and everything that we've had to endure. Everything that we have had to endure was not for us. It's for someone else tonight. So God, tonight, I thank you for this word, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that we take it not for granted who you are. God, that we don't take it for granted, oh God, the power and the authority in the God that we serve on tonight. 
Lord, that we don't even take our loved ones for granted on tonight, oh God. Father, I pray right now that you continue to move according to your word, oh God, for every situation, every circumstance, for everybody's desire and need tonight, God. Let it align with your desire and need for them tonight, oh God. Father, your word said, I will supply all of your need according to my riches. If he didn't even put an S on it, he didn't have to because if he takes care of one need, he's going to take care of every need, oh God. So Lord, I thank you tonight. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your power. And most of all, God, I thank you for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So tonight, that concludes our Bible teaching. I pray that it bless each and every one of you. Tonight, again, we came from Exodus, Hebrews. We were, it seemed like we were all over the place, but it all came together. Again, if God has spoken a word into your life, and, and, and if it's been scribed or you wrote it down, you know, put it in God's word in the Bible and, and just and, and reflect on it daily until it comes to pass. God is not going to change his word over your life because he spoke great things for you. So don't take what you want to hear and then and, and, and take that part of it and then dismiss the other part. You can't do it that way because it, it, it works together. It works together. His word is whole to make you whole to fill up the holes that's in our hearts, the H-O-L-E's, because God wants to make us whole tonight. So again, don't, don't, don't get upset or angry with God if he calls us out on our things, because it's those ugly things that he will use to make beauty for it. We, uh, Sister Sunshine prayed at Saturday that he will take the beauty for ashes. Those things that don't seem so great, he will turn them around to work for our good. He said, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. If you love him, it's working for you. It's not working against you. So that's the word for tonight. Marvin, I'm going to let you come in and just uh, go ahead and close it out. If you have anything, uh, do I need to keep the recording going or go ahead and stop it?